Hey, it's Medicosis Perfect Nails, where medicine makes perfect sense. And today we have a pharmacology concept, or a biochemistry concept, or a physiology concept. Cyclic AMP, loved by your bronchi, by your heart, and your blood vessel. That being said, now let's get started. When it comes to medicine, sophistication is not an option. There is a huge difference between CAMP with the C small and CAMP with big C. So, in the C is small, it's cyclic adenosine monophosphate. When it's CAMP, all caps, this is cathelicidin antimicrobial peptide. This is a second messenger. These doofuses are polypeptides stored in the lysosome of the macrophages and the polymorphonuclear leukocytes. CAMP, when the C is small, this is cyclic adenosine monophosphate. Do not confuse cyclic AMP with 5' prime AMP. These are not the same thing. Today's topic is cyclic AMP. It's a second messenger. So where is the first messenger? I expected that kind of question. So look here, honey. Second messenger, this is the cell membrane. This is the inside of the cell, and this is the ECF. On the inside of the cell, on the inside of the cell membrane, something will happen that will trigger a cascade and this cascade will start like this atp into cyclic amp and cyclic amp is said to be the second messenger so what is the first messenger whatever the flip happened on the outside of the membrane for instance it could be a hormone acting on the receptor it could be a drug acting on the receptor it could be paracrine juxtacrine endocrine whatever Something is happening to this receptor. This is called primary messenger, which will trigger a cascade called secondary messenger. And then the cyclic AMP will do whatever the flip you want, it, you want it to do. If this is a heart muscle, it will increase heart rate and contractility. If this is a blood vessel, it will dilate the blood vessel. If this is a bronchi, it will dilate the bronchi. So here is the story, freaking morning glory. ATP by adenylate cyclase becomes cyclic AMP, and this is the second messenger. And then by an enzyme called phosphodiesterase, or PDE, it will degrade and beat the living crap out of the cyclic AMP and convert it into trash called degradation products. Cool, so how can we increase the cyclic AMP? It's easy, you either stimulate adenylate cyclase or you inhibit phosphodiesterase. It's called common sense. So who's gonna stimulate adenylate cyclase? GS coupled receptor, S for stimulation. And by the way, there's an I, I for inhibition, but this is not the today's topic. So you either stimulate the adenylate cyclase or you inhibit the phosphodiesterase. Who's gonna inhibit the phosphodiesterase? Phosphodiesterase inhibitors. GS coupled receptors as well as phosphodiesterase inhibitors will seek to increase the level of cyclic AMP. ATP to cyclic AMP by adenylate cyclase to degradation products by phosphodiesterase. Who's going to inhibit the phosphodiesterase? Phosphodiesterase inhibitors. Can you give me examples? Yep, we have medications such as dipyridamol and silostazole. These are phosphodiesterase inhibitors. When they inhibit the phosphodiesterase, cyclic AMP is going to accumulate. When cyclic AMP, as well as cyclic GMP, by the way, when they accumulate, they will lead to decreased platelet aggregation and increased vasodilation. And because they decrease platelet aggregation, we have talked about dipyridamol and silostazole on my glorious playlist called Bleeding and Coagulation Disorders. So, ATP to cyclic AMP by phosphodiesterase degradation products. So, okay, let's inhibit the phosphodiesterase by giving dipyridamol or silostazole. Now, nobody is degrading cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP is going to accumulate, leading to decreased platelet aggregation, leading to increased vasodilation. So, when you increase cyclic AMP inside the platelet, this will decrease platelet aggregation. When you increase cyclic AMP or GMP inside a blood vessel, this will decrease the vascular tone and you will end up with vasodilation. These are two crucial functions of cyclic AMP, to decrease platelet aggregation and to increase vasodilation. Freaky morning glory, again, GS coupled will stimulate adenylate cyclase. ATP to cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP will activate protein kinase A. How do you remember it? Everything here is A. Adenylate cyclase, ATP, cyclic AMP, protein kinase A. What's going to happen here? It depends on the tissue. If you're talking about the heart, we will increase calcium in the heart, and this will increase heart rate and contractility. 
especially contractility. But if you're talking about smooth muscle tissue, not the heart, the heart is cardiac muscle, and we're talking smooth muscle right now. So you will inhibit myosin light chain kinase. When you inhibit myosin light chain kinase, which was responsible for contraction, you end up with smooth muscle relaxation. So if you're talking about your bronchi, bronchodilation, because this is relaxation. If you're talking about the vessels, vasodilation, because this is relaxation. And that's why I've told you that cyclic AMP is loved by your bronchi, because it dilates them. And it's loved by asthma patients, because it dilates their bronchi. What are the receptors that are GS coupled? S for stimulation. Stimulation of what? Of adenylate cyclase. You have beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3. You have D1, which is dopaminergic receptor number 1, H2 for histamine number 2, and V2 for vasopressin, Mr. ADH. Who are the inhibitors? Who are the GI? I for inhibition. Coupled receptors. You have M2, which is muscarinic, alpha 2, which is adrenergic, and D2. 2 is inhibitor, except H2 and V2. That's just such a lame mnemonic. How do enotropic drugs work? Um, they can work by increasing cyclic AMP because remember, cyclic AMP in the heart muscle equals contraction, but in the smooth muscle equals relaxation. So let's talk about dopamine and dobutamine, for example. These are positive enotropic drugs. They increase contractility. So here is the story of your sympathetic nerve ending. It gushes out norepinephrine. But if you're talking about your adrenal medulla, they secrete epinephrine and norepinephrine. Why didn't the sympathetic nerve secrete epinephrine? Because it lacks the final enzyme. What was the name of this final enzyme? It's called phenylethanolamine and methyltransferase. So you're saying that sympathetic does not have it? Yep. How about the adrenal medulla? You can bet the rent money. It has it. It has the phenylethanolamine and methyltransferase. And that's why the adrenal medulla is capable of transforming the norepinephrine into epinephrine. That's why your adrenal medulla can secrete norepi and epi, but your sympathetic nerve ending can only secrete norepi. Whatever. Norepi or epi. Norepi stimulates beta 1. How about epi? Stimulates beta 1 and beta 2. Beta 1, beta 2, both of them are GS. Yeah, beta 3 as well as GS, but no one cares about beta 3 right now. Beta 1 and beta 2 are GS. GS coupled receptor. S4 stimulation. Let's stimulate the adenylate cyclase. When you stimulate adenylate cyclase, you'll convert ATP into cyclic AMP, Mr. Second Messenger. And then cyclic AMP will lead to, depending on the tissue, if you're talking about the cardiac muscle, increase contractility. If you're talking about smooth muscle, decrease contraction, so relaxation. And in smooth muscles of your bronchi, it dilates them. Smooth muscles and your blood vessel, again, dilates them. Contraction in the heart, relaxation in the smooth muscles. How about the phosphodiesterase? It will beat the living crap of the cyclic AMP, converting into trash, AMP. Who's gonna inhibit the phosphodiesterase? Three phosphodiesterase inhibitors, such as dipyridamol and silosazole. But there is also melrinone. When you inhibit the degradation of cyclic AMP, what's going to happen to the level of cyclic AMP? It's going to increase, leading to increased contractility. And that's the purpose of milrinone. Milrinone, enamrinone, amrinone, they are all freaking the same. And that's why milrinone, dopamine, and dobutamine, they can all be used to manage CHF. So here are all the functions of cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP in the platelets decreases platelet aggregation, also through protein kinase A. Cyclic AMP can increase your good cholesterol. It can decrease your triglycerides, which are bad. It can decrease inflammation, decrease smooth muscle proliferation, increase endothelial repair, and when it comes to contraction, it depends on the tissue. I will increase contraction in the heart. I will decrease contraction in the smooth muscle. This is one of the best slides on the face of the earth. Okay, this is your cardiac myocyte. How do you increase contraction? You increase contraction by calcium. Calcium induced, calcium release. Calcium, actin and myosin, hashtag contraction. Where did calcium come from? It came from a calcium channel in the heart. Okay, who's gonna stimulate this channel? Mr. Cyclic AMP through protein kinase A. Oh, so how do you increase cardiac myocyte contractility? You can stimulate beta-1 because beta-1 is GS-coupled and GS will stimulate Mr. Adenylate Cyclase. When you stimulate adenylate cyclase, what's going to happen? ATP to cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP, protein kinase A, open the channel, calcium in, calcium induced, calcium release, hashtag contractility. 
or you can be also smart by inhibiting the phosphodiesterase, giving milrinone, enamrinone, amrinone, whatever, you will inhibit phosphodiesterase. This will increase the level of cyclic AMP, AMP, ATP, protein kinase A, open the channel in contraction. That's why giving beta-1 agonist is a good idea for CHF. Giving milrinone and amrinone is a good idea for CHF. Giving calcium channel blockers is a stupid idea for CHF. At least the non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. Your heart loves cyclic AMP because it increases heart rate and contractility. Your bronchi also love cyclic AMP because it dilates them. Morning glory, we need you. Beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, D1, H2, and V2, GS, stimulate a late cyclase, ATP, cyclic AMP, protein kinase A, increase calcium in the heart, hashtag contraction and increase heart rate, decrease or inhibit the myosin light chain kinase in smooth muscles, hashtag relaxation, relaxation of the bronchi, relaxation of your vessels. When you relax your vessels, they dilate. When they dilate, the radius increases. The systemic vascular resistance decreases and therefore your blood pressure decreases. You're not convinced yet? Okay. You dilated the vessel. What happens to the R, the radius? It increases. What will happen to the systemic vascular resistance? It will dramatically decrease. When you dramatically decrease the systemic vascular resistance, what's going to happen to your blood pressure? Your blood pressure will go down, baby. And that's why you can give a D1 agonist, such as phenoldopam, to treat hypertension. Pharmacology makes perfect sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. In case there is any doubt, beta-1 stimulation, GS, you know the rest of the story. But who's gonna stimulate beta-1 norepinephrine? Epinephrine, isoproterenol, dopamine, and dobutamine. Stimulate GS? Cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP will do lots of stuff. If you're talking about the heart, I will increase contractility. If you're talking about the SA node, I will increase the heart rate in the heart. If you're talking about smooth muscles, I will dilate smooth muscles. Great, such as your bronchi and your blood vessels. If you're talking about the juxtaglomerular cells in the kidney, I will secrete renin. And renin will convert angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. And then angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 by Mr. Ace. Angiotensin 2 will work on 81 receptor of angiotensin 2, which will lead to vasoconstriction, increase aldosterone release, thirst sensation. What's the function of aldosterone? Reabsorb sodium, secrete potassium, secrete hydrogen. Boom! So you've just said that angiotensin 2 will work on this receptor and cause vasoconstriction and then reabsorb salt and water and raise my blood pressure? Absolutely. So how can we manage hypertension? You can inhibit Mr. ACE by giving an ACE inhibitor or you can inhibit the receptor which is 81 receptor of angiotensin 2 by giving angiotensin receptor blockers or you can antagonize the renin by giving aliskyrin or you can give calcium channel blockers. Why? Because they will dilate your vessels and they will increase cardiac contractility. Cool. GS, you see this GS? Stimulated by beta-1? Give beta blockers. Yep. Or you see all of the beta-1 stimulation? You can get it from the source. Centrally acting. Sympatholytics such as clonidine and alpha-methyl dopa. These are alpha-2 agonists. Mr. Rizerpain, this is a VMAT inhibitor. Guanithidine, I call it Mr. Fake, because it's a fake neurotransmitter used to fool your nerve ending. We have talked about cyclic AMP. Let me tell you briefly about cyclic GMB. Although this is not today's topic, they are very similar. So, start with GTP into cyclic GMP into protein kinase G will stimulate phosphatase. Phosphatase, it will in remove the phosphate, remove the phosphate from the myosin light chain, which was active, and converting it into myosin light chain without phosphate, hashtag inactive. Inactive myosin light chain equals relaxation in smooth muscles, in the erectile tissue, and in the blood vessel. And that's why GTP and cyclic GMP will dilate your blood vessel, hashtag relaxation. How can I dilate my vessels? Easy. You can give Pro-drugs of nitric oxide, because nitric oxide will stimulate guanylate cyclase, GTP, cyclic, you know the rest of this. So what are the pro-drugs of nitric oxide? Hydralazine, nitroprusside, nitrates, and these will stimulate guanylate cyclase and relax your smooth muscle and dilate your vessels. Brilliant. Is there another way? Of course, you can inhibit phosphodiesterase 5, which will inhibit the conversion of cyclic GMP into GMP, and this will increase cyclic GMP 
to relax your blood vessels and relax your erectile tissue. What are these drugs? Sildenafil, Tadanafil, Vardanafil. Okay, so I either give one of these or one of these to relax my smooth muscles. Excellent. Should you combine both together? This is known as crazy because both of them have the same function. If you combine them together, this will lead to severe dilation of blood vessels and severe drop in blood pressure. You can die of hypotension. So never, ever, ever combine nitrates with sildenafil, aka Viagra. I'm an old dinosaur who remembers when Viagra was invented and Starbucks introduced Viagra Chino. One cup and you will be up all night. You remember when I told you about the calcium channel in your heart, which is responsible for increasing cardiac conductivity? Yes, this is called the L-type calcium channel, responsible for calcium-induced calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. What are the drugs that can boost my contractility? Dopamine, dobutamine, epinephrine or epinephrine, isoproterenol. Last thing, the phosphodiesterase inhibitors, by the way, the same enzyme phosphodiesterase is responsible for breaking down cyclic AMP or cyclic GMP. However, there are many, many, many subtypes of this phosphodiesterase. We have phosphodiesterase 4, 7, and 8, and they specialize in boosting cyclic AMP by preventing its degradation. We have other types of phosphodiesterases, 5, 6, and 9, and they specialize for cyclic GMP. They will boost it by inhibiting its degradation. And we have other numbers, such as phosphodiesterase 1, 2, 3, 10, and 11, and they specialize in both cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP. Let me give you some drugs. How about theophylline, caffeine, aminophylline, mesoxanthine? These are non-selective phosphodiesterase inhibitors. Cool. Sildenafin is PDE5. Where is 5 here? Here. And that's why it specializes in cyclic GMP. Dipyridamol is 3. Silostazole is 3. Melrinone are 3. And that's why they can specialize in cyclic AMP and or cyclic GMP. Cyclic AMP, in a nutshell, I will increase your good cholesterol. I'll decrease your bad triglycerides. I'll decrease inflammation and smooth muscle proliferation. I will repair your endothelium and will inhibit your platelet aggregation, which will help your endothelium. This will make your endothelium happy. When it comes to contraction, it depends on the tissue. If you're talking about cardiac muscle, I will boost contraction. If you're talking about smooth muscles, I will decrease contraction. If you're starting to like pharmacology for the first time ever, I have antibiotics course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com, as well as a cardiac pharmacology course on my website. 50 videos for cardiac pharmacology and 40 videos for antibiotics, 90 videos in total, and you can kiss antibiotics and cardiac pharmacology goodbye forever. These two courses are on sale right now. They are the cheapest they have ever been. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Don't forget to get my cardiac pharmacology course and my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.